What's good, everybody? This is Donnie. We got the beats on the beat. You know what time it is. Um, so, listen, I got the luxury of bringing on a very professional, very courteous, very top flight individual. Uh, she is a an exemplary uh, PR person. She is uh, very active in the community. Uh, you know, let me let me take it back to the beginning. So okay. Okay. No, you're fine. Back to the <laughs> when I when I first moved out of California in 2015, uh, I had the luxury of uh, as soon as I touched down, I touched down on a Sunday. By that Friday, I was working in the club. Um, a good friend of mine, uh, Joseph Harrison. Uh, shout out to Joe uh, Joe Harrison. Yeah. And uh, was at uh the, the clubs and the clubs with him and you know uh at one of the one of the times we was out kicking it he had to eat, you know he had us at the table and um met this young lady here and and her artist the, the person that she was representing at the time and um you know I thought both of them were dope I was like oh both these both these ladies are chill they down to earth they're real nice you know what I mean they they are not like you know Hollywood you know type of you know people you know real posh like or whatever um and so you know I took, I decided to, to follow. You know, of course, you know, because that's what I do. I, you know, look out for people. And uh, it just seemed like time after time again, every time I was out, I see this young lady here. And it's like, man, she is out here on her hustle, man. Like, and and always tough, like, always, always very courteous, always kept a G. And, uh, you know, uh, so when my single came out, I was like, first person I thought of was this young lady here. But neither here nor there. I want to introduce everybody to Barbara Sanchez. Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> <laughs> I miss those DJ sounds from the club. <laughs> Even though I never was a club person, but you know, just just to no still worries. have that experience. No worries, it's not for everybody. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> it's not really kind of like now. I kind of feel like you know we kind of need those nights now because it's been. Very quiet and yeah, COVID. <laughs> isolated yeah. from you know. Twenty twenty one is gonna be crazy. People are gonna be turned turned all the way up this summer. Oh my god, yes! I hope that twenty twenty one is the year where this thing goes away, which I really highly doubt. But yeah. Right. So anyway, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Uh, I had a long day today, but you know, I said it's a pleasure for me to be. A guest in your show, and I, I love it. I just love the background. By the way, I'm very jealous of your background. <laughs> Appreciate it. It's mine. It's just, <laughs> yeah, it just looks so professional, so nice. I mean, the intro music. I'm just like, okay, Thank I see you. you. <laughs> Appreciate, it. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yes. Yes. So let's 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 talk about Barbara Sanchez, celebrity PR, entrepreneur, social activist. Who is Barbara Sanchez? Like, let's give, give us a backstory. How do how do we get this edition, this 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 version of Barbara Sanchez that's sitting right in front of us right now? Like, what what's the backstory? Well, uh, in a nutshell, <laughs> I was born and raised in Mexico City. Oh. Came to the states when I was fifteen. Uh, they didn't know how to speak English, so that was a very um, uh, crazy, you know, barrier, obviously. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> right, because cultural shock to begin with, because I was like, oh my God, everybody wanted to talk to me, but then I didn't know what the hell they were saying. So 
Yeah. So it's funny because when I was in Mexico, um, I listened to uh, Tupac's California Love, and I had no idea what the what the song was saying. <laughs> no idea, but I was like, "Damn, this sounds good, right?" And then uh. when I arrived to the states, the first thing I did was look up the who the artist was, and so that's how I became uh, a fan of Tupac. But that's another story. <laughs> then I studied his lyrics, right? And I, I didn't even know what they were saying or anything, but. Um, but I, I listened to it every single day. And then the final, they finally stuck in my head. And I was like, oh, okay. So I, because thanks to that, and that's how I learned how to speak English too, along with obviously my, my teachers at high school, whatever. But thanks to that, I credit Tupac a lot for that because wow. <laughs> I was like, that's how I learned. And I, I used to look up the, you know, the songs in the dictionary and see what they, what they meant. I mean, I, I didn't understand a lot of the slangs because I was like, what the, what? But then, you know, as time progressed or whatever. But anyways, long story short, um, that's how I uh, learn English. And that's how I know all of his songs, <laughs> word by word. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, right. And I fell in love with the entertainment industry since I was five years old. I already knew it in my heart that I was going to do something with this i didn't i didn't know what it was i didn't know how i was going to make it happen but i knew i was going to be involved in hollywood some somehow some way it's weird because i knew that since i was little and even my cousins were like remember when you used to say you were going to be around famous people and be famous and this and that and now you're doing it and i'm like that is so crazy but i manifested that since i was little mm. i guess you can say and you know i'm a social activist i love standing up for injustice and I'm a domestic violence survivor, so I mentor a lot of women and stuff like that. And yeah, and I'm a publicist, obviously. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I represent a lot of great celebrities and been blessed to work with some of the best in the business and up and coming people too. And, and you know, just I work with pretty much everybody. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Now you talk about social activism. Uh, that that piece is very very uh, uh, touching because I you know I know a little bit about about that story. Uh, would you care to like kind of elaborate on that? Uh, let's kind of you know again, and, and that's no pressure, but you know I, I think it's a, such an excellent story. Uh, yeah, what, what is social activism. So I I was brought up in a household where my cousins, my uncles, my grandparents. I mean everybody was very for justice and fighting for what was right, right? So I grew up in a household like that. And so that kind of like took me to a place where if I will see somebody getting bullied or somebody just being called names or something, I will just literally get in a physical fight for them to stop whatever was going on. <laughs> My poor mother used to be called by the principal's office every single week your daughter just got an altercation and she did this and but you know they wouldn't say what happened before that they would just say what happened after right of course uh but then i you know i explained i used to explain to my mom and of course my mom was you know pretty upset and you know punished me very very harsh <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. then you know she understood what it was at the end of the day she was like you know what i still have to punish you regardless but i but she used to tell me, I, I'm very proud of you for standing up for, you know, for others. And that's really, at the end of the day, that's really important to me because that's how I was when I was little. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's how I want you to be. And that's how I want your kids to be. And, you know, so it was, it was uh, in my, in my brain and in my presence at a very, very, very early age. So, you know, it just became a passion of mine. And when I got older, um, I grew up in a dysfunctional family. So, you know that too uh so my parents used to always argue with each other and you know physical fights and all that good stuff uh, so growing up in that environment really affects you really puts uh, puts you in a whole different category of mental health and if you don't get professional help it's it gets really bad when you're growing up because you don't understand why you're becoming promiscuous or you're you know spiraling out of control you just don't understand it and so I got to a point where I used to always get into, like I said, physical fights, or I used to be dating a lot of men. And, and, I, and, I, and I talk about this openly because I feel like we have a stigma for those type of things. Um, domestic violence survivors, and I call them survivors, not victims, because we were able to grow out of that trauma. 
and mm. that made us who we are today. Um, and so that's why it's so important for me to, uh, you know, teach this young girls not to get involved with, with those men that are super toxic and, and uh, destructive, you know, and things like that. So I'm very passionate about helping young women to understand that there is so much more out there than just men. <laughs> no offense, men. <laughs> but, you know, you can make it right. <laughs> Men are fabulous. They're, they're fabulous creatures. I mean, you know, I love them to death. And it's funny because a lot of people, a lot of a lot of the girls, a lot of women, independent women now, they're always like, you know, we don't need no men. We don't need this. We can get, you know, we can get it on our own. And that's fabulous. But you should you shouldn't also close those doors for you. You know, if there's love out there, you should be able to embrace it as well. You know, it's so. that's it, uh, gonna put a pin in that really quick. Um, I, it's interesting that you say that. I, I, I feel that there's that, there's a kind of an independence pandemic that's happening where a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, you know that's the new direction. The new right. narrative is, is I don't need no I don't need so forth and so on. And the, the, being being a, a woman first, obviously, and then a celebrity, a celebrity PR, and I know that social activist. Uh, do you feel? Do, do you feel that people understand that that's a, or have a, a knowledge that that might be somewhat that's a, a, a pre presented to society? Uh, or is that just something that, you know, it's like a narrative that kind of gets lost in translation? I feel like it's a narrative that gets lost in translation for sure, because a lot of people don't open up to discussion. Mm -hmm. They're just basically going by what society is feeding us. Like um, on t even on TV nowadays, there's a lot of shows where there's single moms, which is great. I love it. I love it. I love that there's that avenue now that where you can see a show where a mom is single and is able to hold her own. I mean, I feel like that's super amazing. Right. But I also feel like I also feel that because of that projection, a lot of the women that haven't been in a destructive or abusive relationship get close because they're afraid to, you know, embrace that love because they've been hurt in other ways before. Mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah. So it's not necessarily physically or, you know, being abused physically or whatever it is, uh, whatever, you know, the uh, perception of domestic violence is. But I feel like, you know, they just don't embrace it because they're like, well, you know, we don't, I don't need that and I'm fine. And, and, you know, sometimes you do need to let go of that, you know, and kind of like take the risk. I mean, it's like gambling in Vegas, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You got to, you know, just put in the quarter and see where, you know, the money and see if you get more out of it. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't know. I, I that's, that's something that uh, it's going to, it needs to be a topic of discussion later on. Yes. Uh, maybe <laughs> You need to make it out of 2020 first because it's, it's dangerous. Oh, my God. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so with regard to the entrepreneur piece, because mm -hmm. uh, I know, obviously, that, that that's, a big, that's a big part of it, all of this, uh, because if you weren't an entrepreneur, you probably would not be able to balance all of these things that, that, that you that you do uh, so magnificently. How, what, what, what got you to become an entrepreneur and, and, and how difficult it was of a uh, process was it for you to realize that was your thing and uh, be able to put you know uh, all of these uh, achievements and accolades in in an in a order in the narrative so to speak? Well, it, it was a long journey, uh, but again, that comes from my dad because my dad is a hustler in every sense of the word. So he always taught me that I didn't need to work for anybody. He was always like, you can always be your own boss and, you know, get your own business and, you know, don't let nobody boss you around and let me teach you how it's done and, you know, things like that. And my dad always, you know, used to take me door to door. We used to go to door, door to door sales when I was five years old. And then in Mexico, because this was in Mexico, in Mexico was kind of like, you know, there wasn't that thing about not letting the kids out at, at, at a certain time or, you know, my parents were always very cautious, but, um, you know, I was, I was a rebel when I was, even when I was little, I was like, mm -hmm. Oh, I'm going to go out there and, you know, and, and, and not that I was a rebel. I wouldn't, let me rephrase that. I feel like I was more of a, let me prove to my parents that I can do this on my own type of deal. And let me make them proud. Right. Mm -hmm. So 
I took it upon myself because we used to sell cleaning supplies and I took it upon myself to learn how to be charming and to like actually talk to people and get them to do whatever I wanted them to do and, and sell my products. Right. right. So I have to be charming. I had to be, you know, strategic and I had to be like, Oh my God. And talkative. And, and, but I learned that when you relate to the person in a, in a personal level, and you actually do your research and try to talk, you know, talk to them and ask them questions about who they are, where they come from, what they like. Uh, they actually do respond to you. And based on that, you can actually take advantage of that situation and make a relationship with that person. Mm. You kind of relate to them. Like I used to sell the LA, the LA news. Uh, I used to do on a, I used to work on a telemarketing service and I used to be the top seller because I learned how to talk to them and relate to the, especially to the single moms because mm. I could relate to them so well. Uh, I used to sell the, you know, the, the newspaper and at that time it was 2006 or seven. No, no, no. 2005. Nobody was using newspapers anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I was off the internet, but if you're a good salesperson in every sense of the word, or if you actually do your homework, you could sell a popsicle to, a, to somebody in, you know, at, a, at the snow. <laughs> You know, like with somebody that's like, <laughs> you know, yeah, and like, you know, like a penguin and be like, hey, do you want to buy a popsicle for me? Sure. You right. know, so you can actually find ways to do that if you pay attention to certain things. But anyways, to um, answer your question, uh, yes, it's, it's been hard. It was hard. It's still still hard. I mean, and it's not I'm not saying hard right now as it was before. It's definitely a process from when you start to where you see yourself now. You're like, whoa, I've done all this. Like you turn around and you're like, whoa, oh my gosh. <laughs> but you also don't forget uh, the sleepless nights, the getting up in the morning, the working as uh, three jobs sometimes. I had to work at McDonald's. I had to work at, you know, um, retail stores. I had to be a waitress at a restaurant before I became this person. You know, I hustled a lot before. And I used to have to pay to get into clubs just to meet the right people the right you know the right uh individuals and open up my network so it was it was a struggle it was very very hard especially me being a single mother with two kids mm -hmm. and having a babysitter i didn't have a babysitter i used to have to beg my friends to help me or pay them for you know to take care of my kids while i was at an event or doing this or you know and they have to get up early in the morning to drop them off at school mm -hmm. and then to go to work so I was like, oh my God. So it was, it was incredibly hard. I'm not going to lie. It was incredible hard, incredibly hard. But now thank God it's, it all paid off. <laughs> now I have my own business now. I don't, I don't work for anybody. This is, um, you know, I'm my own boss and I have the flexibility to spend time with my kids whenever I want to. Now that this whole coronavirus is going on, I mean, they have online school, so I can just be be here with them and be like okay like get on your computers while i get on mine and let's get to work you know so yeah. let me answer this yes. uh, uh I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a dad myself um and i have i have my own thoughts about this but but yeah. since you have kids i want to get your perspective on this <clears throat> how do you feel what, do you feel that the narrative that you are t you you are instructing your children on is the one of the old model? I don't want to say old model because I don't want to. Uh, uh, what what is it? Push uh, push in a direction, right? Um, but do you feel that the model of uh, you know go to go to school, go go to uh, you know go to college, get a degree, uh, work in a, in a, in a uh, you know Fortune five hundred company, or corporate America? Uh, do you think that stands now, um, or do you uh, follow the, 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 like the, the, like say your father, where it's like at the end of the day, don't let anybody over your head just get out there and get out there and make it for yourself. What, what, what's your thought on that? Um, I feel um, I honestly feel like school is so important. School is <laughs> still very important to uh, push to your kids. They should be uh, going to school and having a degree. And mm -hmm. the reason why is because uh, school doesn't, okay, so this is where people get so confused about the school situation and being your own boss and a CEO of a company. Mm -hmm. School doesn't teach you how to do that, number one, okay? Yeah. So doesn't teach you how to do that. But what it what it's teaching you is how to do the research. 
and how to get ahead of the game. Because if you don't know, there's there's a, a study that I actually did back in 2014, I believe, about mm -hmm. this topic. And mm -hmm. I noticed that about 68%, if I'm not mistaken, like maybe 70% of the people that do go to school and get a degree, is way more advanced in vocabulary and in actually getting better jobs than people that don't go to school and finish the degrees. But mm -hmm. This again is debatable because we have the one percent that made it out of that, like Jay Z, uh, you know, people that didn't graduate from college, that Kanye West, you know, people that are very successful without a degree. But that's a one percent. We're looking at a one percent. We're not looking at a very high percentage. So those people got ahead of the game because they, you know, they implemented other tactics, other strategies, which is amazing. But not everybody has those opportunities. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So I feel when it comes to this topic, I feel that we should still, you know, encourage our kids to attend school, to finish mm -hmm. their degrees, and then, you know, uh, pursue whatever they want to pursue in life. I mean, uh, you know, just there's so many opportunities. And, and, and the, the thing that's going to get you ahead is not so much the school, but it's going to be the resourcefulness of it. You have to be so resourceful. Right and learn your industry better than anybody else. That's what I always tell people. If you come to a job interview with me, you gotta know exactly what you're talking about about my industry. Because otherwise I'm gonna look at you funny and not have the respect and be like, I'm sorry, you're just wasting my time. What are you doing here? You could ask right. me questions because questions are so important. Questions are never stupid. Questions are never dumb. But if you ask me the questions that I, know that you should be prepared with then i'm gonna be like you're not for this job <laughs> you know what i mean like you have to be you have to be resourceful and you have to understand what you're talking about you have to know what you're talking about like you don't have to understand but you have to know what you're talking about so i always tell my kids because you know my oldest thinks he knows it all oh of course that's how oh, <laughs> kids are but this one's special. So he's like, you know, he he, he does good challenges, man. I, I gotta say, like my my <laughs> my <laughs> oldest is like, what? Like what the heck? Like what? How did you come up with that? <laughs> but you know, he uh, raised a good question last time, and I was like, oh, okay. How do I get out of this one? But you know, I I told him. I said, okay. So I said, so you want to go ahead and, and quit school because you know it all. So tell me how you're gonna get a job when you don't even know how to read. You don't even know how to read correctly right now. You don't even know how to, you know, solve this math problem here. Like, what are you gonna do when you actually go apply for something? What are you gonna do? And he's like, and I don't, I don't remember what he said, but um, <laughs> encourage him to, you know, right. uh, be the best version of himself or whatever. But the point is, it is so important, you know, as a parent to still tell your kids, hey, finish your school because it, it does put you ahead of everyone, everybody else. It, it really does. <laughs> That's fair, and, 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 and just in a, in, a, in, a, in a thing too, because I literally just uh, texted my daughter, uh, my oldest, uh, and she was telling me about her friends, her new friends that she met in, in their new neighborhood, and I literally told her the same exact thing. It's like, you know, well, when you're with them, make sure you're the best version of yourself. Of yourself. You know, and it, it, like literally not even 48 hours ago, so it's just it's funny that that resonated with, with me that you said that. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because our, our kids nowadays, they think they know it all. You know, they think they're like, oh, my God, we're going to be fine. We have the Internet. We have Google. OK, that's great. But that's not going to be with you at all times at a meeting. You know, you go to a meeting with professionals. you got to know your vocabulary. Right. you got to learn this fancy words and, you know, this uh, industry words. Everybody, I, I feel like every industry has their own slangs, you know. So right. you do have to know. In business and everything that you do, you do have to know what every, you know, the meaning of, of the industry, the lingo, you do have to know. And, and it puts you ahead of the game when you sit down with, you know, with the CEO of a company and you're able to speak their language. You know, you're like, OK. <laughs> and, 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 and also, too, because, I mean, this is an interesting topic. I mean, I obviously never even had this conversation with uh, anybody with, with regard to kids. This is, this is great. Oh. Uh, how important is it to, to be bilingual or trilingual or you know quadlingual uh, in business? Ooh, super important to to be bilingual. I mean, I could I, I I'm a testimony of that because I I worked in law offices before, so 
everybody, I beat all everybody that applied for the job because I spoke Spanish and English. So like, oh well, yeah, of course, Barbara, give it to Barbara because she's gonna be able to talk to the to the customers, to the clients, whatever it is, and that puts you ahead of the game for everything. I mean, I cannot tell you how much money they pay um, people that translate at the core in the core system. The right. translators they get paid bank. They make bank. I'm like, what? You make how much money? <laughs> Translators at the UN, same thing. And transcribers that are transcribing in core that you know they also have to transcribe in Spanish because some of the you know the people don't don't speak English, so they have to transcribe some of the you know some of the stuff or translate during the court hearings and family matters, and you know they get paid a lot of money. Yeah, for that. I've seen it. So it does. Um, it does uh, put you ahead of the game again to speak another language for sure. So you, how many how many languages do you speak? If you mind me asking, I speak only English and Spanish. I, I'm trying to <laughs> love my. I'm trying to learn another one, but my brain is like, girl. <laughs> I'm trying to learn French, uh, French and um, Japanese because it's like I feel like that Japan is the next big thing. It's it's actually yeah. you know. It's the next big thing, and it's going to become a thing pretty soon. No, I don't want to say a thing, but it's going to be a big industry to tap into. It's been already a big industry to tap into, but because right. of coronavirus right now, it's kind of like. But honestly, I, I want to. I, I really want to go to Japan and, and learn some of the technology and um, and how they handle their marketing and publicity and things like that. Because I feel like that itself is such a a big. Uh, monster out there that you know what i mean it's like whoa like waiting to be there's something out there waiting to be discovered more than anything else that we have here honestly <laughs> but that's one of the industries that i want to definitely tap into yeah. awesome awesome yeah. okay okay yeah. oh last question uh on, on on the topic uh just how important is a pr <laughs> And what is a PR for those people that don't understand the importance of what a PR is or, or what a PR is? Yeah, uh, it's very important that you do have a publicist as a brand, as a business, and even as an individual that is pursuing any type of, you know, acting or singing <laughs> or whatever it is. Um, so it is very crucial that you have somebody like me. And what I do, <laughs> what I do is, um, Basically, I take care of your image, your brand. Um, I give you the visibility that you need for, you know, for you, for example, like you're doing this podcast right now. I will definitely get you sponsors, you know, um, get you in publications, have people talk about you, say, oh, my God, I really want an interview with this guy. You know, he's really good. He's really professional. He has a great background. <laughs> <laughs> I love this background. <laughs> you know, it's like that's the best thing. <laughs> Just, <laughs> but you know, things like that. And so we are the ones, we're the middle um person, so to speak, in between you and the success that you need. Because mm -hmm. we're constantly communicating with the press. We're constantly uh speaking on your behalf. So if you do, you know, great things, then we go and and, and do a press conference about it, like we did with Snoop Dogg when he released his you know his new album and then the you know the tour for the i want to thank me then you know we do things like that we alert the press uh then we you know obviously we break the news we write press releases for the company so for the brand for the artist the celebrity we let everybody know what you're doing basically we put you on the map and then we also create uh some monetary situations for the clients because nowadays because of the digital world that we're living in right. we create uh for the for the influencers now we have to create opportunities for the brands to come and pay for them to you know market their products or talk about their products or put them out there on social media instagram TikTok, you know things like that we have to basically adjust to the times even though we don't necessarily like the way things go sometimes because <laughs> the world is crazy i'll bet, I'll bet. <laughs> now you're judged by how many followers you got instead of the talent that you have, unfortunately. Ah, yes. mm -hmm. That goes for artists, that goes for everybody in this business. Like the first thing they ask you for is like, what's your Instagram? Right. And you know, and that's your resume nowadays. That's who you are. And so I feel like that's so important for 
people to know they need to keep that social media image intact and really professional and really, really presentation is everything. But yeah, but as a publicist, that's what we do. Uh, we brand you, we make sure you get, you know, uh, the visibility and we do damage control as well. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get to the damage control later on in this one. <laughs> yeah. That's why I didn't touch too much on that. <laughs> um, one last question. Um, and, and this is just, and again, I'm speaking solely for those that are, uh, I don't want to say ignorant because it's always looked at as a negative word. Uh, but those who just don't, don't have an understanding about uh, PR. Right. What, what would you say, and not about your rate, not putting your rate out there, I'm not trying to even put you on front street like that, but with regard to uh, PR overall, what should be, the, like, what, 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 is there a an acceptable or a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, industry standard mm. variance and in, 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 in how much people should look to be spending to acquire a, 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 a PR, let alone a PR of your at your caliber. Right. Um. Well, I I'm gonna give you an example just to start. Um. Uh, let me use Slate PR. Slate PR is one of the biggest PR firms in the world. <laughs> Slate PR and okay. let's see, Rogers and Cohen and Sunshine Sex, right? So. Okay. Just to give you uh, an example with those three, if you want to become a client of theirs, their retainer fee starts at ten thousand dollars per month. Ooh, yes, that's money. So, yes. So, uh, it, it, you know, and, and that's and that's because they are big corporations. They have grown their businesses throughout the years to be that large and to be recognized like that. And right. kudos to them. I, I that's the you know the role models that I look up to by the way um because I'm always doing my research um uh, on what they do how they do things you know and and you have to kind of mimic you know those type of ideas and kind of re-innovate them into you know your own sort of way of doing things but anyways um yeah and so when clients honestly complain or potential clients complain or say well that's a little steep for me or that's a little too much for me because my my rate my rate starts at six thousand dollars per month mm -hmm. and that's actually really affordable and really reasonable in times like these like like you know like coronavirus is not anymore <laughs> right. i totally understand i totally get it uh but um you know it's really reasonable because uh, you know we're a, we're a boutique pr right boutique prs usually start at that at that rate but some of some of the you know potential clients they, they feel like wow that's a lot of money and you know it, it is it sounds like a lot but when they get the, the proposals and when you see everything that comes with you know with the service you're like whoa okay you know it, it's a lot that we do we do a lot of work a lot of dedication phone calls emails talking to people like crazy just to try to sell them to you know to um sell the product or sell the pitch to them right. and so you know it, it takes a lot a lot a lot of work and in a lot of the you know potential clients don't understand that and and it's also we cannot microwave publicity that's another mm -hmm. big thing about it because a lot of people always feel like well this is taking forever why aren't you getting me in front of you know force magazine or you know uh you know whatever you know like those big publications right. and and i'm like okay well have you looked at your resume this is <laughs> you hire me <laughs> so we can build it up so you gotta do a lot of building with the clients uh in order for them to get to the next level if they're not there and right. even with the clients that are already there you still have to constantly pitch 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 so many times so that way the media can still remember them even at a level where where snoop dogg is at right now you still have to go in in a lot of the media hey he's doing this hey he's doing that hey he dropped this he's about to you know uh drop whatever because everything needs news presence right and so, it's all and I, I imagine there's a lot of competition regardless too. So, you know, right. 
a lot of competition, a lot. So it, it's a lot. And so you're competing against not, not only the big artists and the big celebrities, but you're competing against influencers now. People on social media that have the social media presence. So then that's why I always tell my clients, like you gotta be, your numbers have to be way up there. Because when you pitch for, you know, for, for them to be, you know, at, at the shade room, Hollywood Unlocked, or, you know, things like that, like those kind of blogs, the first thing they, they look at is the numbers. Like, okay, what are the numbers? What's the numbers? What's their following like? Are they verified? Are they, you know, are they, what, where, what, what are they doing? What they got, it's got to be newsworthy. Right. What they're doing. So that's our job to do. And that's why, that's why that retainer is. is, is that's why the retainer has to, has to be that, you know, at that level, because it's, it's a lot of work. Social media itself is a lot of, it's a whole new world and another job that a lot of, actually a lot of the PR firms that I know don't even do. They don't even offer that. They do things the old school way still, you know, and you're just a number to them sometimes. Cause I heard a lot of people from, you know, from that have retained some of the biggest, you know, celebrity PR firms, they feel like a number because they don't get the interaction that we give the clients. They don't get to talk to them every single day. Right. They don't get to, you know, text them and be like, OK, so what should I post tonight? Or, you know, what should I talk about or, you know, things like that. And it's like we do that. We are in a group text with you, letting you know this is what's going to work, you know, um, this is what, you know, what you should post. And I'm very social media um, savvy. So I'm always on social media, like looking at the, at the clients, what they're doing, what they're posting. If they're going live, what are they, what are they saying? What are they talking about? Because some of them sometimes say things that they're not supposed to. Right. <laughs> I always join their lives. Right. I always join their lives. And, and, uh, and Moniz, Moniz uh, from Love and Hip Hop, she's, uh, she always, you know, she always tells me when I, when I enter her lives, She's like, no, and all my PR is here in my life, but Barbara, I'm not saying anything bad. I'm just here. <laughs> I'm like, oh, better not. Because <laughs> they already know I'm watching everything they do because I'm like, please do not give me a headache. I don't want to do damage control, honey. I don't want to go to this right now. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, I mean, hey, thank you. Thank you for, for breaking it down because, I mean, people don't understand that there's levels to it, especially, uh, like you said, uh, when you break down social media, social media itself is its own animal, let alone entertainment mixed with it. So uh, definitely great topics and uh, great understanding that you, you said with that. Now, let me ask you this. What are you currently working on? Like, what do you, what do you, what, what you got in the chamber that you're working on right now that you're cooking up in the, in the kitchen? Yeah, definitely. So I'm working actually. I am, I teamed up with, uh, with my attorney, Walter Mosley, and his associate actually there. They, they just did a big lawsuit against USC because I guess USC discriminated against two, uh, immigrant workers and they didn't want to pay them the rate. Uh, this, this, uh, workers were cleaning the, I guess the door rooms and you know we're getting we're doing housekeeping and when they ask requested for the ray they didn't want to give it to them and anyways i'm helping them get the story on the media on the latino media side of things like the spanish yeah. media outlets yeah because it's a big lawsuit so yeah it sounds like <laughs> yeah so it's very yeah it's very out there so i was like oh my gosh so walter reached out to me and he was like hey barb i need your help and you know we're trying to get this out you know to the press because this is so unfair. And those are the types of people that I love to, to work with and collaborate with because they're, you know, that brings that brings out my social activism work. Um, and then that, and then Spectrum News just ran a story on my domestic violence story. So it's it's on my Instagram for okay. those that want to watch it is there. Um, it tells you about my story and it gives you resources if you're experiencing, you know, some of those things. And hopefully you're not, but if you are, you know, it's right there right. and i'm also working on my forbes uh feature and uh that's coming out soon so yay. Okay. <laughs> i need that i need i need that autograph asap because people are back home and gonna believe i know you right so that's another another thing that i'm very proud of um you awesome. know that forbes is like 
a dream come true it's like oh my gosh really what like yeah. it's still very unbelievable i'm like wait what the heck somebody pinched me <laughs> <laughs> and i was recently featured on yahoo finance as well as you know at learning how to you know um teaching people how to grow their social media and stuff like that and then i'm working on a few projects with my wrestling clients uh i have a couple wrestling clients that you know they come from texas sometimes and and they get into altercations altercations at walmart <laughs> <laughs> See, everybody gets, everybody gets yeah. to Walmart. Oh my God, it's like so funny. They're super hilarious. <laughs> um, and then, you know, I also have a couple projects with my transgender uh, client, Sunky Angel. She uh, She's actually doing an interview as we speak too uh, with another podcast, of, you know, to bring awareness. Yes, she, she remind me, uh, so, like Sophie Angel, you said, right? Sunky, Sunky Angel. Sunky yeah. Angel. Sorry, sorry, I apologize about that. Uh, yeah. there, wasn't there like a write-up that then something just happened or something like that? Or am I am I like reading it wrong? Well, she was I think she went viral for her video recently. Uh for her song, the song that she did. Yeah. Right. So she went viral for that, and there was a couple, right. So that's probably what you saw on my Instagram. I'm yeah, okay. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, her and then Nathan Pylan, which is another one of my clients, which is another TikToker. Um, you know, we're gonna do a project together on content creators and positivity and um, how to support each other on this difficult times and how to create and you know and make money on TikTok. <laughs> so that's gonna be another campaign that we're gonna run, right, with the TikTok community. And uh, and then, you know we're and I'm working obviously I'm working with my new uh, sponsors as well, uh, you know Moves Wrist Wear which I'm wearing right now. Like I'm just like, yeah, I'm doing 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 right. So it's pretty yeah it's pretty cool it's pretty simple it's nothing like you know what I mean like too much like oh, it's yeah. just an effect. We had to drop the man up we could see it. My hand I know I'm like where's my hand. <laughs> So yeah, so you just put the phone like next to it and like if you tap it or whatever and then it like it goes in there. Look at it. And uh yeah, and it comes out right away. And let me show you. And it's super cute how it comes out. So it's like this. So it has my Instagram, okay. my Twitter, my Facebook, and my TikTok. But not only that, this thing also like you can link up your new newest publications, newest projects, things like that. And then once you actually clicked on on Instagram, it takes them to the story highlights. So that way people know what you're working currently working on. So I love it. Yeah. Clever. I love it. And then they also have a pop socket for your phone, which I don't know where it's at right now, but they have it in the bag. <laughs> and then they have another another sticker that you can actually put on your wallet or you know, if you don't want to carry the wristband um you can actually do you know the little the little thing the little sticker you mm -hmm. can put it on your clothes or you know you can put it on your wallet or whatever is convenient for you and i just i just love it i just it's so so cool so yeah yeah you gotta you gotta stay trendy in in, in today especially when you when you're networking um yes. you know, and people say oh hey man, what's that like it, it, it makes you that you know they remember you you know yeah they do, and I actually, I'm so against carrying like business cards because it's so bad for our environment anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Killing all those poor trees. I'm like, oh my God, you guys need to stop that. <laughs> yeah, I can't tell you how many times I've tried to pass out bad business cards only to find them on the, uh, the floor of the club. It's kind of disheartening too. It is. And so I know it's so discouraging. And you're like, oh my God, I spent all that money. And and then you know, you designed them and gave them this cute little, you know, graphic to it. And and the right. next thing you know, you see them on the floor. You're like, okay. <laughs> I guess that's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So yeah, that, those are those are some of the few projects that I'm working on. I'm sure there's a lot more that I cannot think of right now, but, but there's a lot going on with me all the time. But that's how the main 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 project. That, that's awesome though, because it means you're working. You know what I mean, and that's all that matters at this point in time, right? Right. Yes. <laughs> Got to stay busy and creative. You know, still. Awesome. So, yeah. Okay. 
let's transition into, into some some topics. Uh, let's talk about COVID because we just got the new standard uh, issued by Gavin Newsom and and company. You know, uh, how does COVID nineteen affect what it is that you do? Uh, and in all of the facets that you do, like how, how difficult is it? I know you touched on it a little bit. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, it's been it's been a challenge, definitely, because it put you know it, it left us without without concerts. Number one, mm. <laughs> concerts are totally gone now. Uh, even when people were trying to bring them back recently, they were shut down again. So we're like, oh, great. Um, and, you know, obviously it affected us in financially, obviously majorly in um, sending clients to events, you know, red carpets, you know, events, I mean, networking stuff. Mm -hmm. We couldn't, you know, we couldn't do that anymore and we still cannot do that right now. Um, so it did affect a lot of the, um, a lot of the stuff that we do as publicists and, and the entertainment industry because actors are not able to film. Um, they still, it, they're, they're back to filming now, but it's very, um, you know, they're not in the same room. Like my friend, uh, Omar Benson Miller, he is on the unicorn, I think mm -hmm. is one of them, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, and he was, you know, he was talking about that in an interview, how they were filming in separate rooms and things like that. And they have to get tested almost every week or I'm not sure if it was every week or every three days or something like that. But I mean, you know, they have to be wearing their mask and they have to be like so cautious and mindful of not being close to each other. I mean, that's insane. That's just so insane. I never thought we were gonna be, you know, encountering this type of situation. So I was like, oh my God. So it has affected majorly Hollywood in a, in a very, very uh, impactful way. It's like, it's really bad. It was really bad. I, right now it's getting a little bit easier now because we're getting adjusted to it. You right. know, we're adjusting to the times now and we're like, okay, this is what we got. This is what we got to do and how we have to take it, you know? So we just had to be creative, innovative. Um, and we just had to come up with solutions to the problems and the, the digital world that we're living in gave us that advantage because now we don't have to um, go anywhere. We can just have, you know, interviews like this one right now. <laughs> this is a prime example here. Social distancing and practice it all. Right. <laughs> this is the beauty. <laughs> this is the beauty of this. So you don't have to go anywhere, thank God. And right now. Right. And right. And then so but the, the, the challenge that I'm encountering right now that I will say the major one is the journalists are taking longer to respond than before because everybody's requesting write-ups interviews you know things like that and so they're getting bombarded with with thousands of emails they were already bombarded before but now they're twice as much bombarded because they have to um review you know obviously stories you know more you know publicists are pitching for their clients right now more heavily because of the coronavirus situation so Right. Uh, the press right now is very overwhelmed. There's a lot of uh, overwhelming situations. Uh, in this topic was actually being discussed in the new app Clubhouse. I don't know if you heard of it. Oh, uh, yeah. But, sure. I'm on it. Yeah, yeah. So it was being discussed in one of the rooms with um, Jason Lee from Hollywood Unlocked and other publicists that are, uh, you know, that are really out there as well. Uh, so it was being discussed, you know, how they're being so stressed because they're getting so many requests from publicists to for their clients to be published and so that's one of the challenges we're encountering right now because some of the clients are very angsty all the time they're kind of like what's going on and what's going to you know what's going to happen when am i going to get into this and when am i going to get into that and it's like it's a it's a patience game unfortunately right now right. And, you know some some people uh, are very understanding and some of them are not some of the clients are more like demanding and, and you know they're like well well you know i i was waiting for this last week and it didn't happen what happened and you know you just kind of have to kind of have to explain to them the situation is not the same anymore as they used to be you know they gotta wait a lot longer now <laughs> for things to get out there so yeah okay. um in a quick sidebar on this, uh, you know, question that spurs from this, this topic, um, because you know, there's a, a large I've, I've noticed that doesn't mean that it exists, that just means yeah. that I've noticed 
right. um, that there is a, a there seems to be a large faction of the uh, the general public that still believes that COVID is not uh, you know there's no there's not a lot of truth to it, right? Uh, so there's still people that choose to walk around with no masks so on and so forth and so on. Uh, what is your belief? And should you choose to answer that question? What is your belief? Do you, do you believe that people should absolutely take it seriously or not? Yeah, they should. A hundred percent. This is not a joke. Uh, as much as people want to say and, and think about it is, let me tell you something. It is obviously a conspiracy. Okay. If people want to say that it's yes. <laughs> it's all about politics at the end of the day and, mm -hmm. and, and controlling people and, and getting a hold of of the society in that in that way. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that that doesn't mean that there's not something out there that's really infecting people and getting you sick. Right. Okay? Because if we're gonna get down to that into the whole like uh conspiracy situation. Then of course people, it's it's easier for our society when there's overpopulated to get rid of people, right? <laughs> and what better way to do this then? <laughs> and hey, let's put a virus out there, and uh, yeah, that's gonna help us with you know the population control. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's how people want to see it, and you know that's how it is. But that doesn't mean that this this is not real, and that doesn't mean that it's it's fake because i know personally a lot of people that have passed away and that have gotten the, the virus and it's nothing to be played with nothing to be played one of our one of our actor friends rest in peace just passed away from coronavirus last week wow well mm -hmm. so all right yeah he thank you he uh he was 35. he was filming uh i believe they were filming one of my friends is a producer and they were filming a, a comedy movie or something like that. Uh, then he developed, you know, some of the symptoms. He couldn't smell, he couldn't taste anything. And he went into documenting his journey. Uh, but let me tell you another thing of why you don't want this thing to happen to you or anyone in your family, because the conditions that they had him under the hospital were inhumane were horrible were beyond heartbreaking it's like you you can see the room he was documenting everything that was going on and you could see the room and they had a curtain and then they had one of those holders where you know you do i guess you they collect the the a pee sample like a you know like a urine sample and other situations were going around but it wasn't even his urine what you can see it on the, I'm going to, I'm going to send you the Instagram. Um, he was documenting the whole situation with the hospital. The floor was filthy. There was blood on the, on the table where he had his, his drinks. And, and then they had a, one of those, I don't, I don't remember what they're called, but they're cater. I know what do they call? Um, they put them on your, um, it's not an IV. It's something else for you to, I yeah, forgot. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And so they had one of those on the sink. Just like that, like like just floating down the sink, and he was like, ah, "That's not even mine." And he was like, "Look at this," and he was documenting the whole. Like it was dirty. It was, oh my god, it was so depressing. And he was like, "I hope they move me to another room." And he could barely even speak because he couldn't breathe. He had the you know the oxygen mask, and he was telling people, "He's like, this is not, it's not, this is not a joke. This is very real." For people that's still out there wilding with no mask, nothing like he's like, I I'm like, you know, you know, one of those that, that feels like this was a conspiracy. He was one of those, you know, that believed that it wasn't real. Um, you know, it's not that he didn't take it serious, he took it serious, but you know, uh he's like, it is, it is very real. And so he he and he had diabetes already, he had a pre-existing condition, so he ended up passing away. He couldn't take it, his immune system couldn't take it. So, and his wife and kids got it too. I don't know. I I don't know what their condition is right now, but yeah. So you don't know. You not want to be in the hospital. <laughs> Mask up, everybody. No matter what, no matter what, coronavirus or not, flu season is in full effect, and the flu is actually more dangerous. 
So you do not want to be in a position where you have coronavirus and the flu and then develop pneumonia and, and, uh, and you know, end up in the hospital where you can catch other stuff along with whatever else you have. So, And I'm here to tell you, I'd have caught pneumonia three times. Yeah. It's not nothing to play with. Mm-hmm. Nothing to play with. People die from it easily. So. Yep. <laughs> it depends on your immune system at the end of the day. It has nothing to do with your age. Oh, of course, if you have pre-existing conditions, obviously it's a lot worse. But it doesn't. It that doesn't mean anything if you're even if you're healthy because your immune system might not be strong enough to you know to fight it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. This is crazy. Yeah. Well, thank you for your thoughts on that. Um, let me get to another topic really quick, and then we can kind of you know because I know you got things that you got to do. You're so busy. <laughs> Uh, as a PR person, understanding the, the calamities and stuff like that, and we've already kind of touched on it a bit. Clean up. Specify mm-hmm. as with specificity. We're talking about the cleanup of a PR person. Yeah. Nate Robinson. <laughs> <laughs> Poor guy. Yeah, now, again, uh, I, it's not to make light of the situation, but obviously it's trending. And yeah. it's, a very, it's a very sensitive topic. Obviously, you, you never want to see anybody hurt seriously. Yeah. Uh, and people, a lot of people take for granted the amount of rigors that sports athletes go through in order to present their craft to the world, to the public. Yeah. But this young man, you know, he, I, I'm going to say it no way. I don't know how to, else to say it. This man got decimated on TV. Okay. As a PR person, yeah. understanding exactly what he went through because it had all unfolded in front of us. How do you feel about what, what what are the next steps? Like as a PR person, how how should it be attacked? How would you attack it if you choose to answer that? Uh, just all of the above, like as a PR in the aftermath of the Nate Robinson knockdown to to the Jake uh, Logan or whatever his name is. What is your thought? Well, uh, yeah, I mean, this poor guy. <laughs> I felt so bad to be <laughs> not laughing at him at all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the whole situation was just a mess. It's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. I mean, you know, it, and it's hard to come out in the public after and try to like face everybody because everybody been the whole entire world watched that so you know it's like oh so how do you how do you actually recover from that right how do you how do you have your publicity team bring you back from the death <laughs> to that to you know to back to your respect and your you know your popularity uh, right. because he was stripped from that obviously um well i feel like honestly in this situation with nate because he comes from you know the athlete the basketball situation you know it's like i feel like he his publicity team if he had one or you know whatever how i would handle it if he was right. my client i would honestly use this as an, as an opportunity to turn it into a positive and just teach little kids or young kids to say listen i failed at you know boxing I was a pro basketball player, but now I'm a total failure (laughs) at boxing. But, you know, I learned that this sport is nothing to be played with. And you with this, this is actually your failure takes you to the next level of success for whatever it is you want to do in your career. So I feel like this will be a great uh, impact for him to go and talk at schools or do virtual, you know, you know, uh, panels or, you know, what do you call public speaking, motivational speaking to speak to uh, kids and tell them, listen, it's okay to fail. It's okay to, to you know, to get knocked out and, and it's fine. It's okay. You know, we all go through failures. That doesn't mean that our life is over. That doesn't mean that our careers are over. That doesn't mean anything. We can still make something out of this, something positive. And and if this is to teach you guys that this is how you fail and this is how you rise up to the occasion, then great. Let me do that right now. So I feel like, you know, I will actually have them do a lot of charity work, a lot of speaking, 
um, I will issue a statement on, you know, on respect his privacy at this time. You know, and then give the give the guy a break, have him off social media for a minute. You know, people do forget about these things, you know, people do do forget, which is the beauty of, of this industry at times, you know, like when people focus so much on, on, on something that happened at the moment, three weeks later, it's not hot anymore. People are like, oh, OK, like right now, everybody's focusing on Mayweather and Logan Paul, which is a yeah. total joke. But <laughs> I, but do you do you think people are thinking about Nate now? No, they don't care no more. Everybody's like, oh, my God, Mayweather and Logan Paul are going to fight. Oh. So that's a distraction. And that's great because then that moves into the, you know, that, that gives us the advantage to move to the next situation. It's like, OK, let's close a brand deal now with a company that you know, we can sponsor some kids, we can surprise kids and be like, hey, or take a picture, hey, I got knocked out, or you can actually have kids knock you out, you know, just be like, hey, <laughs> you, know, real quick. <laughs> you know, as a, you know, just as, as a, as a, you know, making fun of yourself sometimes is totally okay. Right. Right. You know, so I, I feel like that I will handle that um, type of publicity in that, in that, in that sense, and in actually close some brand deals and makes, you know, makes us some money with, companies that will actually have him go and, and speak about his failure and how he was able to overcome it and how he's fine with it now. And maybe, you know, get back on the ring and train harder and get a, a rematch. And that could also tie into the, the, the piece that you mentioned earlier about mental health and, uh, you know, have an understanding of that. You can definitely use that as a springboard as well. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. That's a very big topic for everybody because you know, you actually fell at something and then you quit. And right. then you don't pursue it anymore. And it's like people don't understand that your failures are actually the vehicle that's going to take you to the next level in your career. That's interesting that you say that because that's that's a very big thing that I was a uh, uh, principle that I was raised on. It's like, you know, don't trust nobody that's never failed. Exactly. Um, and so, yeah. The fact that you say that is definitely something that to, to, to really hold on to. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Your failures are the, the you know, like I said, the vehicles are going to take you to the next level in your career. You just got to be able to know how to learn from them and then implement them into, you know, improving whatever situation you couldn't do at the moment. But that doesn't mean that you're not going to be able to do it anymore. You know, right. just they didn't work out the first time. OK, well. <laughs> Now we got to pick ourselves back up and see how we can make it. <laughs> All right. Cool. Well, definitely. Uh, thank you for your time. I have one more topic to go with and then we can yeah. just, you know, you know uh, get you on your way. Uh, last topic is uh, the entertainment industry has long since been considered uh, kind of a man's world for whatever that means. Right. Uh, uh, and then I, when I say for whatever that means, I don't mean that to mean that in a way negative. I just, you take it, um, to me, it's a, per a perception. So you take it however you want to take it. Uh, now, being a celebrity PR, oh, sorry, you cut off a little bit. I couldn't hear the last part. Sorry. You froze. <laughs> oh, about that. oh, there you go. What do you feel about? Thank you. I apologize. Uh, what do you feel about the status of women in the entertainment industry, where it stands right now, uh, December twenty twenty? Um, where we stand right now, actually, we're being. I feel like we're being taken more seriously now than before. Uh, this is just my perspective. I could be wrong, but. I feel like now our authority is being more um, honored and respected than before with men. It was very whew, challenging and, you know, we used to have, I mean, we still have to prove ourselves regardless, <laughs> no matter what till this day. But, you know, before when I, when I started doing this publicity stuff, um, I definitely had to prove myself to a lot of men because they will want to sleep with me instead of work with me. <laughs> so how to prove, hey, I could really bring stuff to the table. You know, I, right. you know, my integrity and my morals wouldn't allow me to do that anyways. 
so I really had to be strategic and bringing, uh, uh, you know, a game plan to be like, hey, listen, I can make you money if we really sit down and talk about this, you know, and until I actually was given that chance and that opportunity is how people and, and men, you know, not people, but men started taking me serious. They're like, oh, okay, well, she knows what she's talking about. Oh, okay, well, she could bring money. Oh, okay, well, let's work with her. But it took a long, long time for me to prove that to, to a lot of men in the industry because they have the power trip. They still do. I, I still know. It's funny. I just had a situation today with one of them. And yeah, so they still, you know, they still exist. <laughs> and these are, you know, close friends of mine that sometimes forget that we're friends. And they start talking, you know, all this nonsense and, you know, power trip and, you know, don't do this because of my power and don't you dare talk to me like this because I'm this and this and that. And I'm like, honey, I know you. OK, <laughs> you don't have to you don't have to throw your stats at me like I know who you are, you know, but, you know, people just have the power trip like that. And, and men, specifically men, some of the men that I know in the industry are very about that power, about the authority figures that, you know, that they want to be looked at as, oh, my God, I'm, I'm this powerful person, you know, and I can do it and I can ruin your career if I wanted to, you know, type of type of deal. So, mm -hmm. it's, you know, to me, that's super ridiculous nowadays. It's like, OK, it's, that, that's cute because we both have the same network and all the same people. Right. <laughs> Like, seriously? <laughs> like, okay, but you know, you just sometimes you just gotta let them be and be men. And you know, I learned, I read this book many, many years ago. Um, and I forgot the name of the book, but I'm so bad with names. But you know, it teaches you how you know when when somebody when you're working with somebody or you're dealing with somebody at that caliber where they want to have the power trip you just let them have it because that's you know it's it's not you it's them because of, you know their self-esteem uh it's so low that you know they have to feel validated in other in other levels and if that's the way they're going to feel validated so be it you know be like okay yes you're great you're the great powerful us <laughs> you know you're just like oh my gosh sure um, but you know, it's one thing being like that, and it's another thing being disrespected and 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 you know, and undermined and and humiliated because there's a lot of men that do that still to this day. I haven't encountered it personally, but I heard from other you know other colleagues of mine that they have gone through that type of situation with you know producers or executive producers or you know just men in general that are in the business and and they feel like they need to still you know throw their stats out there and yeah it's like do you know who i am <laughs> type of deal so yeah that's unfortunate it is yeah it is but i feel you know to answer your question and just to be um sure with it uh i feel like we have made a lot of progress and you know and, and we are being respected and looked at you know as professionals more now and we have the press which is great we have press to be able to talk about the issues that we go through so it's not so much like before where everybody was silent because everybody was afraid to lose their career or be blacklisted or, you know, whatever it was. Um, now it's not like that anymore. Now it's like, OK, well, let me go ahead and oh, yeah, you're trying to do this to me. OK, well, let me let me talk about this. Let me, you know, raise the, the issue with the press. <laughs> Right. Let me talk about what you're doing, my friend, because we're not going to do we're not going to play this game. So I love that we have that freedom now to be able to that we're not afraid to, you know, and intimidated by men to do our jobs, to perform our jobs and, and you know, just be uh, the professionals that we are, you know. So, yeah, totally understand. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> yeah, but it's a new era for sure. And we are definitely making our mark and we're definitely, you know, being heard. And, and that's a great, you know, that's a great feeling. As a woman, I can I can honestly say that's a great feeling. There's a lot of professional men as well and kind and respectful that I admire so much, uh, you know, that have given me the opportunity to really, really work and, and come in to, you know, to lay something on the table and say, hey, listen, this is a great idea that we can do for this project. And, 
and they really consider, they really do it, they really, we really execute it together. So I do have to say that as well as there are men that do not respect your work at times, the majority of the men that I have encountered and work with, like yourself, do, and they're, they're very respectful and professional, and I'm very thankful for that. <laughs> Thank you. I'll, I'll, I'll accept that compliment. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're the prime example. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Yes. So yeah, yeah. So, advice for aspiring talent. What is the advice? What advice? Do, whatever advice do you have for those that want to pursue a career in, in activism, or you know, entrepreneurship, or celebrity PR, or just overall good people? What's your advice for aspiring talent? Well, my advice is to actually believe in yourself. Number one, believe in what you have in in the in the dream that you have. Don't let anybody tell you that you cannot do it, that you're not good, that you're that's not gonna work. Do not listen to that negativity, number one. Number two, learn about your industry. Learn, really get the time to do your research about what you really wanna do, whether it's acting, whether it's publicity, whether it's marketing, whatever it is you wanna do, please do take the time to do the research. Read a lot of uh, books about the, about the topics that you're interested in, learn about, the importance of, of you know developing ideas and bringing stuff to the table for people because that's what's going to put you ahead of the game and number three be patient okay be patient do not do not pace like i mean i do not do not rush into doing you know stuff everything takes time so just because you're not you know you didn't have the business that you wanted in six months or maybe a year maybe two maybe four it does not mean that it's not gonna happen for you. It will happen. You just gotta be patient and dedicated, be disciplined, and be a hard, I'll, I'll work everybody, okay? I'll work everybody, it doesn't matter what it takes, how it's gonna get done. Do not lose your motivation, do not be discouraged, and just keep at it, yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you said a lot of great things and a lot of things that are being uh, memorable. Uh, you definitely one of the more memorable, uh, memorable um, interviewees for the beat. Oh, thank you. From, how can people learn more about you? Uh, well, people can find me on Instagram. That's the number one platform <laughs> on Instagram at Barbara Sanchez PR. And all of my platforms are Barbara Sanchez PR, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, LinkedIn. Clubhouse, <laughs> all that, all that good stuff. All the yeah, social media. Yeah. But if people really want to learn more about me, as uh, you know, in depth and really do their research, uh, they can actually Google me by my whole entire name. Everything comes up: my publications, my social media networks, which is my full name, which is Barbara Lisset Sanchez, and Lisset is L I Z Z E T. In Barbara Sanchez. So Barbara Lisset Sanchez. That's how you can really, really find me on Google. <laughs> okay. cool. Yeah. And uh any any shout outs uh going going forward, like you know, people you want to shout out to be like, you know, hey, what's up? Like, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely to my sponsors for the most uh wristwear, which I'm gonna give you the link so you can attach it to the uh, interview because they make my life so much easier when I go places. I can just tap in their phone and be like, ah, oh, me on Instagram. <laughs> so shout outs to them for, you know, for, yeah. So shout outs to them for that. And then also to, obviously to my business partner, to all of my beautiful clients. There's a lot to name, but thank you so much for trusting me to be your publicist and your friend. And also, you know, shout outs to obviously, my kids, Jacob and Alan, uh, they're going to be watching this interview later. <laughs> and to all the people that support me, my mentees, obviously, uh, there's a lot to name. But thank you so much for believing in me and always placing your trust and into letting me advise you for, you know, for your careers and your future. And thank you to you for having me as well. Thank you so much for the beat for having me today. And this was super exciting. I had a lot of fun. And I can't wait to do this again. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. I actually uh, have one more, one, another podcast called Two Flu West. I do it with my, my business partner and associate, 
uh, Nicholas Baker. Shout out to him. Uh, but we, we address actually uh, political topics, government, uh, government uh, stance, uh, and uh, just overall social awareness and so forth and so on. You'd be an interested candidate to, to, to just come on and just talk in there at the round table uh, with uh, all of the, the other people that we know that are influential or that, that speak, uh, you know, eloquently. And uh, I think you'll definitely be a, a great voice to add to that, that, that topic. So hopefully you, be helpful, uh, hopefully you consider it. Oh, my God. Yes. I would love to do that. Yes. That sounds great. Yeah. Just cool. please let me know when. And I'm all about that. I love politics, even though. You know, people say, don't talk about politics or religion. <laughs> well, you know, what's funny, I, I say about politics is that, you know, what it's 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 something that everybody needs to speak on, regardless of if, uh, you know, if, if people uh, understand that they, they, there's other voices out there besides their own, then they'd be able to understand this life better. And exactly. That's probably, so. exactly. I mean, imagine a world where, you know, we all come together and actually express our opinions, but do not argue about it, but rather, you know, understand where the person is coming from. I think that will help us a lot to relate to, you know, other people, their cultures, uh, and to get rid of this racism and, you know, unnecessary problems that we have in the world. And we all used to, you know, we'll listen to each other and be like, oh, wow, like understand where we're coming from. That would right. be amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Things, you know? will, things will go together so well. If they, if yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, you know, but uh, yeah, I think that'll be, that'll be great if people are, you know, open to do that. And, and I love having healthy debates, you know, even with friends that have different opinions and different beliefs, I do like to open the floor for them to, you know, express how they feel and really understand where they're coming from. You know, once you do understand the place where they're coming from and their, you know, their reasoning on why they chose that, you know, to choose that situation they're currently in or, or elect the president that they elected or, you know, who they voted for, it really opens your eyes on why, you know, that they, they are the way they are. And, you know, I, I think I read somewhere, the, the uh, and I'm paraphrasing a bit, the last true fun frontier that's undiscovered is the, that within the human psyche. You know what I mean? If, yeah. if we had more time to really focus on ourselves, we'd be in a better place as people, as a democracy, and so forth and so on. Uh, but, you know, hey, I read stuff like that, so hey, whatever. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's just like we we uh, we were trained to speak and, and not listen, you know? So I feel like when you listen and you speak less, you actually understand and learn about other people so much more mm -hmm. when you're just like listening. So you're like, mm, okay, but really listen. <laughs> it's funny because you, you, you sound like my mom. My mom used to say, you listen with your ears, not with your mouth. So there you go. Yeah, <laughs> <was very> wise. <laughs> don't, tell, don't say that too loud because if she watched this, then her head going to get all big. We don't need that. <laughs> <Wise woman. laughs> but Again, uh, it was a pleasure to have you on. Uh, again, um, you are uh, uh, very well respected, very well respected by me as far as your accolades, uh, everything that you've done, and the 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 the, 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 the most true accolade that I have uh, uh, experienced from you is that you're you're so humble and you're you're a people person, and I appreciate that about you. Uh, definitely hope to have you back soon, uh, uh, either here or on Two Flew West. Um, and, uh, you know, you be safe, you and your family be safe in 2020, uh, and till 2021. And hopefully we can, you know, take, you know, mask off, but, uh, till then you, you and your family be safe. Yes. I need to start wearing lipsticks. But wonderful week and thank you. And I'm here for you. And you know, already that you have my full support and everything that you do. And yes, just whenever you need me to be, you know, jump back on or, you know, do some other venture, I'm here. <laughs> what are the first numbers I'm going to be calling? I appreciate you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a wonderful night. Oh, Thank you. You too. <laughs> Bye-bye.